Okay, wonderful algebra students. All right, so this is the last presentation on exponential functions. If you're still struggling after watching this whole video in its entirety, I suggest you look at Khan Academy videos. There's about 30 of them on exponentials, okay? So not understanding will not be an excuse. We have to use all our resources definitely during this time. All right, so I'm gonna go through this presentation. It's gonna be a longer video, so if you get something forward ahead to something you might not get. In the year 1900, the number of metric tons of copper produced in the world was 495,000. Each year since 1900, the total number of metric tons of copper produced has increased on an average about 3.25% over the amount produced the previous year. Which function models the total number of metric tons of copper produced in the year that is X year since 1900. Okay. Well, first, I know that an exponential function is Y equals A times B to the power of X. So we need to find our A value and we need to find our B value. Well, <clears throat> we want to know how much we started with, how much copper we started with, and it's since 1900. So since 1900, we started with 495,000. That starting amount is our A value, because that's our y-intercept. So our A value will be 495,000. Okay, now we need to figure out our B value. Well, it gives us an increase. So I know this is going to be exponential growth. and increase about 3.25 percent percent this tells me this is the r value so since i know one it's an r value and it's in percentage i have to move the decimal place two places to the left so the r value equals 0 0.0325 and then i don't want the r value i want the b value so since this is exponential growth i know i'm going to add one to this number so my B value is going to be 1.0325. All right, and which one shows an A value of 495,000 to B value 1.0325? A. If this said this was exponential, um, where it was decreasing every year, <clears throat> then the answer would have been B, okay? Um, and then C and D both don't even make any sense because those aren't exponential functions. All right. So exponential functions, we just want to make sure that A, what does it represent in the word problem? The starting amount, um, the initial amount, how much you start with. B, how much are you increasing by? How much are you decreasing by? Um, so... This right here, this page, if I could take a screenshot of this page right here, I think it would be an excellent page, especially this information right here, when it comes to the R value, what to do with it, if a word problem gives it, okay? <clears throat> All right, practice problem number one. Scientists are studying a bacteria sample. This is the function. Gives the number of bacteria in the sample at the end of X days which is the best representation of one of the values in the function. Well, before I even start, I want to go ahead, sorry, I keep moving the screen. I want to go ahead and mark up this equation before I even look at my numbers. I know my A value is 245. So that means I started with 245 bacteria, period. Then my B value is 1.12. Now, is that exponential growth or exponential decay? How do I know? It's exponential growth because this number is greater than one. So I know it's exponential growth. Now, I can already look and see that the multiple choice problems have percentages in them. So it's also gonna want me to ask for my R value. Well, if this was exponential growth, to get my R value, or my B value in the first place, I had to add one to the R value. So to go backwards, I'm going to need to subtract one from my B value. So 
1.12 minus 1 will give me 0.12, or 12% 12 is the R value. Now that I've broken down this problem, let's look at all the answer choices. A, the initial number of bacteria is 12. No, the initial amount of bacteria is 245, the A value. The initial number of bacteria decreases at a rate of 88%. No, my percentage is 12%. The number of bacteria increases at a rate of 12% each day. Hmm, this is looking real good. I knew this was exponential growth because the B value was greater than one and 12% <clears throat> is the R value. The number of bacteria at the end of one day is 245. No, the number of bacteria that it started with before a day even occurred was 245. After one day, I have to take into account that 12% increase. So my answer here would be C. All right, on the next one, try to pause the video and see if you can get the answers um, before I tell them. Okay, a student used this equation to show how the balance in a savings account will increase over time. What does the five represent? So this is only asking about one part of this. Well, five, is that the A or the B? The A. So I know this has to do with the initial amount. How much I start with? Y'all forgive me in my handwriting. Initial amount, okay? So let's look through it. The interest the savings account earned for the first year. Um, don't think it's the amount of interest. Um, interest is a percentage, which would have been the R value. So A, no. The annual interest rate of the savings account, no. I'm um, sorry, go back to A. The interest the savings account um, incurred would be the f of x minus the principal. Anyways, just skip what I just said. <laughs> All right, C. The number of years the saving account has earned interest. The number of years would be represented by the x. The starting balance of the savings account, D. Yes, that's my answer. This is the starting amount. All right, this is the very last thing. Um, basically, what you need to know, that exponential regression is the same thing as linear regression, quadratic regression. It's when I have a table, and it could be like a scatter plot, that looks like either exponential growth or exponential decay. Um, but it might not be where the values exactly line up with a good B value and a good A value. Um, so we want to get the line that best fits this. Well, exponential regression will give us that line of best fit. Line of best fit. So what I put when I'm using Desmos is I put in my table, so I would add the table and put in, after that, y1, squiggle, a times b to the power of x1. When I do that, it'll give me my a and my b value. And then all I have to do is plug those two things in to get my linear regression equation. So this is the problem I gave you on the Google Doc. So go ahead and try this problem and see what answer you get. Hope it helps.